Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is beautiful. Yeah, I know, hot take. But seriously, there were parts of this movie where I got chills just from the visuals alone, so of course I was inspired to try and recreate it myself. At first I tried to match the main style of the movie, but I could never really get it to a place where I was happy with it. But I kept going down a rabbit hole playing with different styles and ended up with this cool comic book style that's its own thing, although it kinda looks like this guy from the movie. So you know, has failed successfully I guess. It is worth mentioning that this is not a beginner tutorial, so if this is your first time opening Fusion, you might want to swing on down over to my beginner tutorials playlist. So first, I need a 3D model, and there are tons of places where you can get these online. The one I'm using is the mannequin model from Mixmo because it's already animated, and you know, it's free. So I'm just going to choose one of these animations, I think Ninja Idol looks pretty good, and then I can just hit download. Now when working with animated models inside of Fusion, I like to use the Alembic file format, but Mixamo doesn't actually export Alembic, so I can just download this as a Collada DAE, I think I want the frames per second to be 24, then just hit download. I can convert this Collada file into an Alembic file using Blender. So in Blender I can make a new general file, select everything and delete it, then I can go to File, Import, Collada, DAE, and then find my model. Now I've got my animated model inside of Blender. Now I'll find the end of my animation and set the end to that frame. Then I can go to File, Export, Alembic, then I can give that a name and a location, then hit Export Alembic. So here I am in Fusion, so I'm going to import my model by going to Fusion, Import, Alembic Scene, then find my model, make sure the frame rate matches, then hit OK. So I can hit 2 to bring this to the screen. It's a bit big, so I'm going to bring the scale down to 0.5. Then I'm going to add a camera 3D and a renderer 3D. Then I'll position the camera so that it looks good. So now we need a Spider-Man texture, but where are we going to get that? Well, we can actually make it. So if I open the media pool, I can bring down the original texture and open that in the second viewer. So first of all, you can see that there's this border around it. I have no idea why this is, but Fusion does this for 4K images. If you have any idea why, I'd love to know. But for now, we can just add a transform node and just scale that up until the border's gone. Now we also don't need this in 4K, so I'm gonna add a resize node and just check keep frame aspect. That'll automatically make it 1920 by 1920. Now looking at this, it's not too hard to see which parts are which. Here's the torso, here's the back, these are the legs, here's the hands and feet head, and the arms. So first off, I can add a color corrector and make this red. Then I also want to bring down the lift. Now I'm going to add another color corrector, plug the resize into that, and this one I will make blue. I will also bring down the lift and the gain on that one. Now I can merge this on top of the other one. So now it's all blue. So to choose where I want the blue to be, I can add a polygon node and then just start masking out the shape I want the blue to be. Now you also see these areas where it's kind of striping. These areas are kind of inside the mesh, so you won't see them. So you can use these to kind of transition between places without really worrying about it showing up. Now I'm not going to go too detailed with this since it's just for the tutorial, but you can spend as much time on this as you want. Now once you've got the parts you want masked out, you can also add another mask, set this one to subtract, to say which parts you don't want the blue in. So like for example his belt. Alright, that looks pretty good for now. Again, you can spend as much time on this as you want. Now to add the webs, you could go through and draw them by hand, but that would take forever. So an easier way to do that is to add a background, go to the image tab, then change the height to 1920. Then do it again because you forgot to uncheck auto resolution. So now it matches the size of everything else. Now I'm going to change the color to white. Then I'm going to add a grid effect, set the line color to black. Then I can bring down the major line spacing all the way to zero and just merge that over our thing and set the apply mode to multiply. Now in the grid I can bring up the row and column cells. You might have to play around with it, but for me, 50 on both looked good. So right now it's applying to the whole model, and I only want this to be applying to the red section, so I can take our mask right here, plug that into the grid, but that does the opposite of what we want. So under the settings I can hit apply mask inverted. Now for the eyes I'll copy and paste the background over here, merge that over the thing, then I'll add a polygon, and just roughly mask out the shape of an eye. You can select the ends and hit Shift S to soften those out. Then I can move it around till it looks good on the model. Now for the outline, I can duplicate this, paste it over here, merge that over. Then this merge, I can hit Control T to switch the inputs. Then this background, I can turn to black. Then just bring up the border width in the polygon. And you also want to click this on the border style so that it has this nice point. Then after that, I can add a mirrors to get the other one and just move that into place. Now for the spider symbol, you can find tons of these online. I downloaded this one from productioncrate.com, so I can drag this down, 
to merge it over. I can just move that into place and bring down the size. Now you could also add the red spider on the back the same way, but you won't be able to see it in this shot, so we don't really need to. Now the original texture already has some shadows kind of baked in, so our model already looks kind of 3D, even though the lighting is off. For the 2D effect that we're going for, we don't want this. So I can copy and paste one of the background nodes and color pick a base color from this texture. Then I'll alt click on these lines once they turn blue, that'll make a pipe router. So I can plug our background into that and now it looks kind of flat and 2D, which is just what we want. So this method of modifying the texture ourselves gives a lot more control over the final look, and it really works well for the Spider-Verse look, since there's so many different Spider-Man, you can change the texture of a 3D model to get any Spider-Man you want. Next, I'll add a directional light into our Merge 3D, and turn on lighting, and I'll play around with the X and Y rotation until I get something that looks good. Now for this effect, we need a way to isolate just the shadows, but if we tried to key out the darkest parts of this, we would get the black parts of his suit too. So we need two different renders, one for the colors and one for the lighting. So I'm going to add a Replace Material 3D and plug the Merge 3D into that. Then I will copy and paste this render right here and plug the material into that. And check lighting. So now we have a render with just the colors and the lighting and shadows. Now this one's a little bit too shiny for my taste, so in the Replace Material 3D, I can go under Material, open Specular, and just bring down the intensity all the way. Nice. Now I can add a Luma key here, hit Invert, then drag the Render 3D into the mask of that so we don't have this black background here. So to see what we're doing a little better, I can bring down a background node and plug the Luma key here into that. So now I'm just going to squeeze together these high and low points, just kind of crush them down until I have this solid shadow. Then I can merge this on top of our color render. Bring that to the screen. Now it has a really cool cartoon look, but now it's kind of covering his face. So to fix that, I can add a Luma key here, plug the render into that, the color render that is, then just bring out this low point until it's just the eyes. Then I can bring that into the mask input of the merge. Then the settings, check apply mask inverted. Now in the directional light 3D, I can play around with the settings and everything and it'll update in real time. So now I'll just play around with these settings until you get a lighting set that you think looks pretty good. Now to match that comic look that I'm going for, I want to add an outline. And there are tons of ways to do this in Fusion, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring down a background node, plug the merge into the mask input of that, add an erode dilate, and just bring up the amount a little bit. Then I can merge this over our merge and then hit Control T to switch those inputs. Now I've got an outline. So I can control how thick it is with the road dilate and get something I think looks good. Next, I'm gonna add those comic book dots you see. So for this, I'm gonna use a plugin called Hexagon Tiles and you can get it for free on Reactor. Now at first glance, it doesn't look like this is useful for making dots because these are hexagons, obviously. But if I bring up the size and border width, I can actually get a look that looks like those comic dots. So I'm going to change the color one to black and the border color to white. Then I can bring the size up to 200 and then play around with the border size until I get something that looks nice. Then I can merge this over, set the apply mode to multiply, then drag out from this merge and plug it into the mask input of that. That looks pretty good, but I don't really want it to be covering his eyes. So I can add a luma key here, plug the merge into that, and plug that into the hexagon tiles. I want to hit invert on the luma key. Now one thing the Spider-Verse movies do is they often have the characters moving at half the frame rate of everything else. So we can recreate this by adding a stop motion node and changing the frame repeat to 2. Now it's going to be moving every other frame. And since my timeline is set to 24 frames per second, it'll be moving at 12 frames per second. Now let's add a backdrop for him to be on. Now one thing I like to do to kind of drive home this comic book look is under effects, go to templates, edit, and generators. Then I can drag down this paper effect. So it generates this kind of paper texture. So we can drag out from here, merge that on top of the paper. Now to make him look more like he's printed on the paper, I can change the apply mode to overlay. Well now he's really faint so I can hardly see him. So I can copy this merge, paste it down here, drag it up here. Then I can drag stop motion into that. That's a little better. Then in the paper, I can bring down the gamma until the dark parts look dark enough. You can also play around with the texture sieve. Now one thing that the overlay does is it made it really saturated. So I can add a color corrector node and bring down the saturation to uh, maybe about 0.8. Yeah, that looks good. Now this is an optional step, but one thing I like to do is add another plugin called Match Tint. You can also get this one for free on Reactor. Then I take the map white 
then bring it to kind of a pale yellow color to kind of recreate that worn look you get from old comic books. Now you might notice there are these black lines at the bottom of your thing. That's just something that happens with the erode dye light. We can fix that by adding a transform and just scaling it up a tad. And now we've got this really cool comic book look. Now I know I say this in a lot of my tutorials, but really play around with this technique. You can get so many different looks just by tweaking a few settings on this. Like here, where I made this spider rex that kind of reminds me of those watercolor paintings from Calvin Hobbes. And you don't have to do Spider-Man related things, you can do this on really any 3D model, like this skull or this dragon. And if you want to learn how to realistically add a dragon to your footage, you can check out this video right here.